Hi, I'm Jen Campbell. This is Art About. I'm with Jolianne Wood, who's going to show us today some oil painting. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm I am. I'm very excited. So we've brought a whole setup here. Yes. you want to say anything about your setup? Yeah, I'll start off with that. This is uh, the easel I take when I go outside. Yes. Uh, I do about 80 to 85% of my work on location, painting from life. Uh, I also do things in the studio, but that's a different process and a different easel. Yeah. And uh, But this is what I schlep out into the great outdoors when I want to go and paint. Uh, it's got a mixing trowel, a mixing place here, and room for my gear over here. Today we're going to utilize a little table that uh, will help to hold some of the gear. I normally don't take the table out when I go. Got it. Yeah. I love that. So I have some questions for you. Okay. Um... Do you mind if I go ahead go and for it. Go for it. start? Yeah, please do. Um, when did you first consider yourself an artist? That's a tough question. Well, I painted for several years before uh, as a hobby, more of a hobby, uh, before I really, I, I've considered myself an artist, but I didn't consider myself a professional artist. I kind of call myself a semi-professional uh, I painted on the weekends, I did shows, uh, but it wasn't until I took a, a flight out west to paint with some friends, Okay. and uh, in doing so, I, of course, had been working in a corporate environment, I was sitting in first class. Oh, wow. And I had on my painter's garb, uh -huh. and uh, the gentleman I sat next to, he, he said, so what do you do? And I gave him my elevator speech. Oh wow! And uh, at the day of uh, that day, and he said he looked at me. And he said, "No, no, what do you really do?" <laughs> and and in that case, I said, "Well, yeah." He said, "Where are you going?" He said, "It's obvious you're not um, you're not doing your regular job, dressed for business. This. You're not dressed for business, right? right?" Right, right. And and so I said, "No." I told him I was going out west to paint with some friends in Arizona. And I had, you know, pulled out my little card. I had pictures of my work on it, and it told a little bit about me. Yeah. And I handed it to him. He said, why didn't you lead with this? Oh. And that was some of the, that was the best question that anybody's ever asked me, oh, actually, my. because it taught me that, you know, he said, when you can lead with that, then you will be well on your way to being an artist. He I said, see. you may be painting now, you may be doing shows, you may be doing things, you may be teaching, but until you can lead with that, mm. um, you, need, you need to have it in your mind first, and then and, you become it. And you lead with that now. And, then, and I lead with that now. I yeah. love that. That's great. Um, so I've been to your studio. Your studio's yes, you great. Have. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, how does the current place that you're, you're painting, your studio, how does that influence your art? Um, well, the neighborhood itself influences it, uh, and I've moved my studio a couple of times in the last uh, last few years. Uh, I used to have it in Rockport on Main Street, and it was a real fishbowl of a place, yeah. and it was sort of like a taffy shop. Sometimes I was making taffy, sometimes I wasn't, but people really enjoyed watching. Okay. And, um, you know, where I'm at now is in Beverly Farms. Beverly Farms. And... It's a little more private, and I'm able to dive in and really work on my craft, but also teach. And I teach privately, uh, as well as in and, in and around town, uh, and in and around the North Shore. But but the but your artist studio, it needs to have really good karma. Ooh. And you, I can usually tell that by walking in the place. Describe you know. that. What does that um, mean for you? Is it a warm, safe haven to create art? Have other artists? Created in the space. Okay. Um, it's it's nothing I can really describe. It's just a feeling that yeah, this this is a good space. A good space. And it and it, you can you can make light happen. And, you know, even if it doesn't have the best light or it doesn't have a lot of windows, you know, that's something technical that you can fix. But but that feeling of being in a in a safe place to create is something you can't you know money can't buy or you can't you can't just make. Mm. So, I love that. Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit about your process when you paint? Like, you're yeah. doing this now. 
Yeah, and I, I, um, I love painting skies. And this is this scene is a marsh scene over. Um, uh, it's kind of out the back of Lobster Land over in uh, Gloucester, and it, I took it out the window. Uh, I'd had dinner there one night, and I, I just really loved it. Uh, right now, I'm just starting with a road map and just knowing where my design is. What do you mean um, by road map? Uh, a, a veritable road map. If you you know, drive your car down a street or you're going someplace, you have a way to get there. Yeah. With this, it's more the initial design, and but it, it, it's a launching point for the okay. remainder of the painting. I see. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm, I'm not really capturing any detail. I'm just trying to find where the elements are going to lie. And if I liked the, um, the way that the clouds kind of came down, and I loved the contrast of the yellow, um, the yellow against the purple, mm. the orange against the blue. Mm. You got some complementary colors going on there. You also have a lot, a full spectrum of colors going on, right? As well, so love that. Um, is there anything that you're particularly working on right now, like? Uh, Things that in painting that you're trying to perfect or you're trying to um, master? I think color theory has been something I've been working on for the last few years. Yeah. Um, starting in the pandemic, I'd always been a hunt and pecker as far as my my color mixing. Okay. And I was that that artist, that girl who would go to workshops and I would hover and I would ask the artist that was teaching the workshop, well, how did you get that color? Mm. And then I'd go out and buy the tubes and I'd make the color. And the next thing I knew, I had to, you know, a million tubes in my bag. Right. And as a plein air painter, somebody who paints out of doors, you want to dwindle your gear. You don't want to have a lot have of gear. more. Yeah. <laughs> um, because color, you're carrying things around. Right. But, yeah. the, but the color harmony was also something that um, I was really striving for. And so because of that, I ended up going back to a very basic um, color theory where you're mixing from, um, mixing from primary colors or, or from three colors, a red, a blue, and a yellow. Got it. And the choice of the red, blue, and yellow may vary, but um, it's, it's still just the three colors and then mixing out from there, I'm able to get a, just a whole spectrum, uh, pris the whole prism of colors, the whole color wheel of colors. So you're right. doing the trees right now. Yeah, I'm doing the trees. And, and why are you picking that color for the trees? Um, Cause, uh, well, I'm picking something that's similar to it, but uh, in the end, and if I had had a little bit more time, yep. uh, I would be um, layering a little bit more, but I'm going to put on more of the color that I see. Okay. Um, and it also, it's also the darkest thing in the piece. So by... So it's the darkest color, the darkest value. Yep. When you think about a scale of light to dark, uh, and and one a value of one being white and a value of uh, ten being black. Yeah. Uh, you want to know what the lightest thing is in a subject that you're painting and the darkest thing. Yep. To where that matters. Um, if you get the values right, and your color is off your subject and your interest is still going to read. Your final piece is still going to look like whatever it is it is. Okay. Uh, it will still look like the thing. It may be off on color, but at least the depth will read and the composition will read. Got it. And uh, it makes it a, a little easier. So, so just... you usually paint favor painting the dark colors earlier in the painting? Yes. So okay. after, after the, um, and I'll, and I'll go for a dark, 
a dark, dark, but I won't go for the absolute darkest thing. Okay. Because you still have to have um, room to go darker, even I still, yeah. or lighter, even still. So I will often take things to almost as light as it should be and almost as dark as it should be to allow for the darkest highlights, like the darkest darks, and then the little singy highlights that you end up putting on at the very end of the piece. I see. So, I see. So for now, I'm just looking at, this is sort of a dark area, getting some basic shapes. They vary the tops of the trees here. I see what you're doing. You're, you're making the tops of the trees and giving it definition. And yes. And I'm not, I'm not being overly perfect about it. Yep. The eye fills in a lot of things. Really? The eye, the eye, the mind. Describe that for the, me. Well, the, the mind, the brain fills in a, yeah. lot, a, a lot more than you would think it would. So the viewer of the yeah, painting. Yeah, so the viewer of the painting can, can translate shapes and colors and, and lights and darks and know, okay, this is, this is a tree line. Mm. Um, maybe they've been there, maybe they haven't. But I also, I'm going to leave that rather rough. Yep. Because I have other stuff going on. Yeah. And I like to work sort of around the panel hmm. to where um, uh, it gives things a chance to tack up and dry a little bit to where I can put another layer on when I'm out of doors. Got it. Yeah. So from here, I'm actually going to find... This green here is, sits a little bit outside of my of my wheel right now that I have. Okay. Um, if I want to test a color, I can always bring it up towards the easel. I see. And I think, okay, is that really what I want to do? Yep. Or do I want to create something a little bit deeper in tone? So you're mixing the blue and the yellow. Uh -huh. To make a green. Right. I see. Just going to mix a little bit more of that color. It's probably not going to be exactly what it should be. Neat. Talking about um, places that we go, how does um, being in the North Shore sort of influence your art? Oh, it's influenced it. Um, just general travel and going to different places. Yeah. Um, and the North Shore has, I think, the finest, most extraordinary light. Mm. Very different, very crystalline. Things are very crystal clear when you look at the sky, when you look at the water. And, uh, and artists have been painting here for generations because of that light. Huh. And, um, but, but light differs wherever you go. And it really... Um, the light is what I love up here. I also love the hit, the tradition and the history of the artists in yes. this area. Yes. Like like who? Um, well, the Cape Ann School, uh, which was all along all along the North Shore, really. Yeah. Uh, painters uh, like Emil Groupe and Aldro Hibbard. Um, those are those are two. Uh, Lester Stevens. Okay. And and then the modern painters I follow, who I I know personally, and who are friends of mine, um, and the screen is still eluding me, um, <laughs> as they as they always do, um, would be uh, Stapleton Kearns, John Caggiano. They're both of Rockport. Uh, T. M. Nicholas, and uh, his his son. Uh, uh, well, Tom and TM. TM's the son. I got to get that right here in a minute. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a little too dark. Okay. But um, I love I love being able to to be friends with them and to know them and to be and to go on painting outings with them. That's great. And and that's to me one of the biggest uh, benefits of being here versus my home state, which is Virginia. Okay. I moved up a few years ago, and uh, I found that 
being able to get to know some of these artists and understand what they do, how they do it, uh, it has been invaluable to me as a painter. And and I'm really I'm really thrilled to be able to to do what I do. Um, in the painting is the reason that you move from Virginia to Massachusetts? Mm, no, life change. Life change. Life change. I yeah. I needed a change. It was time. Yeah. Uh, I was staring, you know, middle age in the in the mirror. Uh oh. And uh, and I and I thought, you know. It's time to, to leave and go do something big. Um, right. I just it just felt I just felt like the time um, the life change happened and I thought I'm gonna move somewhere. I made a list of potential places and that green is just really screaming at me. Uh, <laughs> a, a potential places and I ended up um, coming up here and I'm really glad I did. And we're glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go on to the sky because I think then I'll know what to do with the grass. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, an interesting question I have is, uh, do you have a motto or a, a creed that you live by? Um, I guess the first one that comes to mind is something that I say a lot, and I, I, it's a tagline that I use in my social media, yep. which is to make it count. And make it count. I always want to be able to not only make something count in my life every day, even if it's just getting up and unloading the dishwasher, uh, I know that sounds odd, but uh, I remember when my both my parents are deceased, oh. and going through the grief process, finding one thing that you could do every day, mm. and get up and do. And if you did that one thing, you knew that you you did something. Right. So making it count not only in my personal life, but also realizing that there's a whole world out there, and and just trying to make somebody's life a little bit better each day. Yep. Uh, and being genuine about it. I think that there's there's so much, um, you know, it's, it's, so often people will tell you what they think you want to hear, not maybe what you need to hear. I see. And um, and they also, you know, we walk around in, in the world with all of our devices. And um, some of my Corporate training has taught me to really take note of people and each individual that I come into contact with each day and see who they are, maybe understand who they are, yep. and understand that they're going through this life just like everybody else. And doing the best they can. That's right. That's right. You, you said you had a, a corporate life, mm -hmm. and you spoke a little bit about it. Did you? Is there anything you want to... Um... Um, I, was in the pay, I was in the payments industry. Okay. For about 30 years. Oh, wow. Uh, and um, I, the last 10 years of that, I traveled on airplanes a lot. Oh, wow. And did, did a lot of very, very important things for very important people. Yep. And it's sort of a, <clears throat> something I, when I look back on it now, I think, wow, there's so many other things I could be doing. Right. Interesting. So... But I, but it made me who I am, and I'm here now, and in living this life, and it's different every day. Yep. Um, I do a lot of teaching. I um, do, uh, of course, I paint. Obviously, I go out and paint, and I see see friends um, out and about. But I also uh, I teach. I teach at the Council on Aging in Topsfield. Yep. And uh, I really like bringing art into the community. Yep. So as much as I want to have my have my art uh, out and about, um, little little plug there, out and about, yep. as much as I want to, I also want to make a difference with people for people with art. Yes. And and so everything that I take on, everything I say yes to, I feel like needs to sit within that um, that idea of it is it is it good for me? Is it good for the community? Is it something that will that people will get something out of that they'll enjoy? Right. Um the last thing I really take into consideration is, you know, is it going to make me famous? Is it going to, I, I don't know. It's yeah. just, I, I just try to be who I am. Yep. And, um, 
and enjoy what I do. And I, you know, they've taken, you know, I could, I could get my soapbox out and get up on it about art, the arts in the school systems and in today's world. And it's not really seen as a career path. Yeah. And, and it is, I mean, there is so much enrichment that happens with, with the arts and, yeah. and including it, not only in the schools, but in everyday life. Um, and it can bring joy to people in everyday life. Right, right. If you were to give advice to a young artist or a starting artist, what would you, what would that advice be? Um, do it because you must do it. Do it because you must do so, it. Why is that? Um, otherwise, you're not, it's just going to frustrate you mm. beyond anything it, it you have to love it yep i think it's like anything you do if if it's something you truly love and you have a passion for it uh this is something my dad used to say yeah uh when i told him that i, w I was going to go into art history and i was going to major in antiquities okay. and work in a museum he said um you know do you love it and i said i absolutely love it and he said well if you really love it and you're passionate about it and you're willing to stick with it then, then the career, the money will follow, mm -hmm. and um, I'm still waiting on some of that. But, <laughs> but I'm, you. but I'm, but I'm trying to, really trying to, to to stick with it. And, but I would say for for young artists today, um, don't do it for for to to get likes, and don't do it. You know, do it because you really want to create. Yep. Do it because you have something down here that needs to come out. Yep. Th and the only way you can express it is through some sort of tactile creation. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with uh, with music. I also studied music in college. Okay. And I was a singer for most of my life. Oh, wow. Um, for a long time. Okay. And I... Um, really in, enjoyed that in the end, you know, sometimes it's, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm. And, uh, I, art really seemed to replace that feeling yep. that I had, uh, when I would sing and I loved art. There was so much you could do with it. And so I, I stuck with the art in the end, but say yes a lot is say another yes a thing. Lot. Say yes a lot. Um, the the power of saying yes for a year is is huge. Say yes to everything, even if it's something. If you're just starting out, even if it's something that you aren't sure of, right? Um, but say yes to things that you don't even aren't even sure that you can do because you don't know until you try, right? So, right. and then after saying yes for a year, you have to learn how to say no. Uh -huh. Because after having said yes for a year, you get very popular. And so you then you can be a little more picky and choosy. Choosy. Uh, but saying yes a lot is a good way to to move forward well, and not be afraid of it. Well, Jolie, I'm glad you said yes to us. Yes. At Art About. Um, I, I, I end every show mm -hmm. um, with a poem, and I, um, I sign it. And oh. I give it to the artist as a gift and date wow. it. So um, I'm going to say our poem. Um, Can I continue to paint while you read? Yes, please, please do. Great. Please do. Um, so uh, the title of this poem is uh, Color Wheel. And it starts with, there's a richness in blue and a stillness in white that sidesteps the magic in purple and the strength and steadiness of maroon. To mix the paints and get together a trip into oils and keeping with the brush, full of love and full of art. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's, our, that's your poem. That's my poem? That's your poem. Oh. You get to keep it. Oh, that's wonderful. So Thank you, you. Put it in your studio. Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been fabulous. Uh, yes, this has been fabulous. And, I really appreciate uh, it. 
I will be finishing this up probably in the studio. Oh, I don't good. know how much time we have left. Well, I want to get where, where can people find you? People can find me. People can find me in Beverly Farms at 22 Oak Street. I'm nearby the Beverly Farms Depot, uh, kind of catty corner to the doggy depot. I see a lot of puppy dogs every day and I hear them too. Um, you can also find me online. The easiest way is going out to Google and typing either, either in either Jolie Ann Wood or my studio name, Studio in the Farms. Uh, both of those will bring up a website, uh, JolieAnnWood.com okay. or StudioInTheFarms.com. Okay. And uh, it will also, um, you can also see some of the history, some of the things I did back in my state of, home state of Virginia. Virginia. Uh, I'm also on social media on Instagram. Uh, it's at Jolie's Art, J-O-L-I-S-A-R-T. And I am on Facebook with um, Studio on the Farms as well as my personal one. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing your easel and all of your paints and, and uh, brushes. We really appreciate it. Thank you. This was Jen Campbell with Art About. Thank <laughs> you.